Hi, welcome to EPG Patshala Spanish. I am Rajiv Saxena and I teach Spanish in the Center of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and Latin American Studies in the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. We are in the paper entitled Intermediate Grammar and in this module we will try to learn about the future tenses. So the objective of this module is to know how to use future tense and to build a strong communicative base for all the beginners who may find it difficult to cover grammatical aspects of Spanish in their early days of learning. When we talk about the future tense in Spanish, the first thing to be noted is that the future tense is used to indicate actions that will take place at some point later on or in the near future. Spanish future tense is almost equivalent of English future tense where we use will or shall followed by a verb. I repeat that Spanish future tense is the same as the English future tense where will or shall is followed by another verb. So for example, to illustrate we will take uh, a sentence like hablaremos con el mañana. We will talk to him tomorrow. Hablaremos con el mañana. Now let us go on to a very important aspect which is the conjugation of the future tense. How do we conjugate in the future tense? The future tense in Spanish is formed by attaching the appropriate future ending to the entire infinitive of a verb. So in the entire infinitive of the verb, we attach the appropriate future ending. We look at some of the conjugations which are given in the e-text and which you can use to consult and you should memorize it as these will remain as models for all the regular verbs in the future tense. So let us pick up cantar for example to sing which is an AR ending verb and it is a regular verb. So yo cantare, tu cantarás, él, ella, usted cantará, nosotros, nosotras cantaréis, and ellos, ellas, ustedes cantarán. I repeat, please remember only cantaremos doesn't have an accent, otherwise all the rest have an accent. Cantaré, cantarás, cantará, plural, cantaremos, cantaréis, and cantarán. The same is the model for, to be followed for hablar, charlar, for all the other AR ending regular verbs. Let us look at another ER ending verb and how it is conjugated in the future tense. Uh, let us pick up volver to come back. Volveré, yo volveré, tú volverás, él, ella, usted volverá, nosotros, nosotras volveremos. Vosotros, vosotras, volveréis, and ellos, ellas, ustedes, volverán. I repeat, volveré, volverás, volverá, in the plural, volveremos, without accent, volveréis, and volverán. It is the same pattern, more or less, which is used for the IR ending verbs also. So let us pick up another verb, like pedir, pediré, pedirás, Pedirá, pediremos, pediréis, and pedirán, without an accent on the pediremos. So it is, I repeat, yo pediré, tú pedirás, él, ella, usted pedirá, nosotros, nosotras pediremos, vosotros, vosotras pediréis, and ellos, ellas, ustedes pedirán. Please keep in mind some of the following points which we are going to be elucidating over here. Please keep assured that all the act future forms have an accent mark except in the nosotros form. I repeat, all future forms have an accent mark except the nosotros form. All the three conjugations also have the same endings that we have seen. AR, ER and IR all have the same endings. And we do not need the auxiliary verbs like shall or will in Spanish. 
because in Spanish the future is expressed by a single verb or word which is the conjugation of a verb. So let us illustrate with some examples. Let us talk concretely about some examples like Suresh comprará este coche. Suresh will buy that car. So in English translation you will have to put the auxiliary verb will but in Spanish comprará includes the concept of will or shall. Suresh comprará ese coche. Mañana será jueves. Tomorrow will be Thursday. Mañana será jueves. I repeat, all the future forms have an accent mark except the nosotros form. This is common for almost any verb in Spanish and that is why it makes it very easy to learn the conjugations which in other tenses become a little bit tough to remember. So now that we are talking about a tense which is so easy, just pick up the e-text, learn it, memorize it and practice it and you will have perfect future tense in Spanish. All the three conjugations have the same ending. This point elaborates that the root does not allow the conjugation to be changed whether it is AR, ER or IR. And the other advantage is that in other tenses of grammar, conjugation used to be different for different types of verbs classified according to its roots. However, in this case, it always remains the same. Which are the irregular verbs in the future tense? Well, the advantage in the future tense is that there are not many irregular verbs in the future tense. They follow one of the three patterns, which is like salir, to leave, saber, to know, and hacer, to do. So, there are only three patterns to remember when you're talking about the future tense. Salir, to leave, saber, to know, and hacer, to do. Verbs like salir, drop the E or the I of the infinitive and add the consonant D. So, instead of salidre, it is saldre. For example, salir, yo saldre, tú saldrás, él, elia, usted saldrá, nosotros saldremos, vosotros saldréis, and ellos, elias, ustedes saldrán. I repeat, saldré, saldrás, saldrá, saldremos, saldréis, and saldrán. It is as simple as that. Another verb like poner also forms a very set pattern. We only drop the E or the I of the infinitive and add the consonant D. So, in a verb like poner, just remove the E or the I of the infinitive and add the consonant D. So, it will become Instead of poner, pondré. So we have the conjugation in the following manner. Yo pondré, tú pondrás, él, elia, usted pondrá, nosotros pondremos, vosotros pondréis, and ellos, elias, ustedes pondrán. I repeat, pondré, pondrás, pondrá, pondremos, pondréis, and pondrán. What happens with a verb like tener? In tener, again, you just drop the E or the I of the infinitive and add the consonant de, like poner, tendré. So, pondré, tendré. Tener conjugation is yo tendré, tú tendrás, él, elia, usted tendrá, nosotros tendremos, vosotros tendréis, and ellos, elias, ustedes tendrán. I repeat, tendré, tendrás, tendrá, tendremos, tendréis, and tendrán. What happens in a verb like valer? We drop the E or the I of the infinitive and add the consonant D, valdré. So it is, valer is conjugated as valdré, valdrás, valdrá, valdremos, Valdréis and valdrán. I repeat, yo valdré, tú valdrás, él, elia, usted valdrá, and in plural, valdremos, valdréis, and valdrán. What happens in the verb like venir? We drop the e or the i of the infinitive 
and add the consonant D. So instead of venidre, it is vendre. Let us go on to see the conjugation of venir then. Venir in the future is conjugated in the following manner. Yo vendre, tu vendras, el, elia, usted vendra. In the plural, nosotros vendremos, vosotros vendréis, and elios, elias, ustedes vendrán. I repeat, vendré, vendrás, vendrá, vendremos, vendréis, and vendrán. So, now that we know how verbs like salir and the other verbs are conjugated for the present tense, we shall see how they are done in the future tense also. So, poner, to put, is pondré. I will or I shall put. Tener, to have, is tendre, ten, tender. I will, I shall have. Valer, to be worth, is valdre. I will, I shall be worth. And venir, to come, is vendre. I will, I shall come. I repeat, poner becomes pondre. Tener becomes tendre. Valer becomes valdre. And venir becomes vendre. So even in this, so-called irregular verbs, there is a pattern to be followed and all you have to do is to memorize the pattern and you will not commit any mistakes. What happens in verbs like saber? Verbs like saber drop the vowel of the infinitive entirely. So, instead of sabere, it becomes sabre. I repeat, verbs like saber drop the vowel of the infinitive completely. Saber becomes sabre. I repeat, the conjugation of this is yo sabre, tu sabras, el, elios, elias, sabra, nosotros sabremos, vosotros sabréis, and elios, elias, ustedes sabran. Sabre, sabra, sabra, plural, sabremos, sabréis, and sabran. What happens with verbs like poder? Verbs like poder drop the vowel of the infinitive entirely, like instead of saying podere, it becomes podre. So the conjugation of poder in the future is yo podre, tu podras, el, elia, usted podra, nosotros podremos, vosotros podréis, and elios, elias, ustedes podrán. I repeat, podre, podras, podra, podremos, podréis and podrán. What happens in verbs like caber? They drop the vowel of the infinitive entirely like caber becomes cabre. So the, the conjugation of caber in the future is cabre, yo cabre, tu cabras, el, elia, usted cabra, nosotros cabremos, vosotros cabreis, and Elios, Elias, Ustedes, Cabran. I repeat, Cabre, Cabras, Cabra, Cabremos, Cabreis, and Cabran. So let us look at how verbs like Saber and other similar verbs are conjugated for the present tense. Poder becomes Podre, I will, I shall be able. Caber to fit becomes Cabre, I will, I shall fit or suit, etc. Aber, there is, becomes abra, there will be. I repeat, podre becomes, poder becomes podre, caber becomes cabre, and aber becomes abra. Another verb, querer, becomes querer, I will, I shall, want. However, please note that the verb like aber is conjugated only in the third person rather than the first person in this sense, let us move on to the second set of rules, which are about the irregular verbs. The verbs like asir and dasir are also having irregular stems. So, it becomes are and dire. So, dasir to tell the conjugation in the future becomes yo dire, tu diras, el, elia, usted dira, nosotros diremos, Vosotros, vosotras diréis, and elios, elias, ustedes dirán. I repeat, diré, diras, dirá, diremos, diréis, dirán. Another verb that we have talked about over here is hacer. Hacer becomes are. 
and the conjugation of asir in the future is yo are tu aras el ara elia ara usted ara nosotros nosotras haremos vosotros vosotras haréis and ellos ellas ustedes harán i repeat are aras ara haremos haréis and harán Remember that these irregularities occur only in the radical or the stem. Compounds of these verbs are also irregular. The endings are the same for regular and irregular verbs in the future tense. So the compounds of these verbs are irregular and the endings are the same for regular and irregular verbs in the future tense. The future of aber when not used as auxiliary verb in a perfect tense translates that there will be and is used in the third person singular only please remember that the future of aber when not used as an auxiliary verb in the present tense translates there will be and is used in the third person singular only abra mucha sorpresa en la fiesta there will be many surprises in the party. Habrá mucha sorpresa en la fiesta. What happens to the compound verbs in the future? Now that we know the forms of irregular verbs, we shall see how other verbs are formed on the basis of these verbs. That is, why if we know the above verbs, we do not need to memorize the conjugations of the compound verbs. So, if you memorize the above forms, we do not need to memorize the conjugations of the compound verbs which we are going to be dealing with in this section. So, let us pick up some concrete examples of some verbs in the future. Componer, to fix, becomes compondre. Deshacer, to undo, becomes deshare. Detener, to detain becomes detendre. Disponer, to dispose, becomes despondre. Exponer, to expose, becomes expondre. And imponer, to impose, becomes impondre. Mantener, to maintain, becomes mantendre. Let us quickly revise this once more. Componer, compondre. Deshacer, desare. Detener, detendre. Disponer, Dispondré, exponer, expondré, imponer, impondré, and mantener, mantendré. There is a pattern even over here. So, componer is a compound of poner. As deshacer is a compound of hacer. Detener is a compound of tener. Disponer is a compound of disponer. So, once you know poner, hacer, tener, it is very easy to learn these verbs also. Let us continue with more examples of this kind. For example, obtener, to obtain, obtendré. Oponerse, to oppose, me opondré. Proponer, to propose, propondré. Rehacer, to do again, rehare. Reponer, to replace, repondré. Retener, to retain, retendré and satisfacer to satisfy this satisfare and suponer to suppose supondre i repeat quickly obtener is conjugated as obtendre oponerse becomes me open opondre proponer to propose becomes propondre rehacer becomes reare reponer becomes repondre Retener becomes retendre and satisfacer becomes satisfare and suponer becomes supondre. Please note that the verb satisfacer is a compound of hacer. The F is an indication of the old spelling and pronunciation of facer which later on became hacer and has been maintained and remained in this compound. So, satisfacer is also following 
the old spelling and pronunciation of Faser, which later on become, became Aser. What are the other uses of the future tense in Spanish? The future tense is used to indicate actions that will take place in the future. However, the future tense in Spanish communicates other messages as well. Let us have a summary of its usages in this part. To indicate an action or event that will happen or is likely to happen at a future time. I repeat, to indicate an action or event that will happen or is likely to happen at a future time. Manana vere a Sunil. Tomorrow I will see Sunil. El examen será el viernes. The exam will be on Friday. I repeat, manana vere a Sunil. El examen será el viernes. The key expressions manana and el viernes in the examples that we have just given give the time the action is supposed to take place. So, the marcadores de tiempo, mañana and viernes, give the time the action is supposed to take place. Some frequently used time expressions are given hereby to indicate the future. So, please learn up these marcadores de tiempo, these time markers, to understand which these time markers, which when you're supposed to use the future. So, a la una, a las dos de la tarde, at one or at two in the afternoon, we use future. De aquí a dos, tres días, etc. In two, three days, etc. El año que viene, next year. El lunes que viene, next Monday. So, as soon as you have these marcadores, remember that the future has to be used. El martes, on Tuesday. El mes que viene, next month. En un mes, in a month's time, en una semana, in one week, or esta noche, tonight, these are also some important marcadores de tiempo, time markers. El martes, el mes que viene, en un mes, en una semana, esta noche, etc. Let us move on to other examples of this type. Esta primavera, the spring. Esta tarde, this afternoon. Este verano, this summer. La semana que viene, next week. I repeat, esta primavera, this spring. Esta tarde, this afternoon. Este verano, this summer. And la semana que viene. We can also move on to other marcadores de tiempo like later, luego, tomorrow, mañana, tomorrow morning, Mañana por la mañana. Tomorrow night. Mañana por la noche. Tomorrow afternoon. Mañana por la tarde. And the day after. Pasado mañana. So I repeat. Luego. Mañana. Mañana por la mañana. Mañana por la noche. Mañana por la tarde. And pasado mañana. Also indicate the use of the future tense in Spanish. The future tense is also expressed, uh, is also used to express a conjuncture, a supposition, or probability in the present. This use is the equivalent of some Spanish or English expressions. Can, I wonder, must be, and probably. I repeat, the English expressions can, I wonder, must be, and probably are also used in Spanish in the future to express conjuncture, supposition, or probability in the present. El muchacho que viene será Iqbal. The boy who is coming, can it be Iqbal? Estaremos a 20 millas de Nueva Delhi. We must be 20 miles away from New Delhi. ¿Cuánto costará esta pintura? I wonder how much that painting costs. Note that in the last example, the English equivalent is an indirect question preceded by I wonder. It is very common to present a doubt with I wonder 
which is when it is presented with a question mark in Spanish. El coche que viene será suyo. The car which is coming, can it be his or hers? Estaremos a 30 kilómetros de Assam. We must be 20 kilometers away from Assam. ¿Cuánto costará esta casa? I wonder how much that house costs. So let us have a look at a short story, El Ultimo Día by Kike Ebeas. Let us have a look at the highlighted section and you will see how gustar and other similar verbs are placed in Spanish writing. Examples from the text to be noted are Le llamaré después y le cantaré todo eso. I will call you later and will tell you everything about it. Te quedarás a comer? Will you stay for lunch or for dinner? I repeat the examples to be concerned about in this text that we are going to be dealing with are Le llamaré después y le contaré todo esto. Te quedarás a comer? These examples show us the future of tense, uh, or the future tense usages in the Spanish grammar. It is even more important that we read a short story in the Spanish language. And these examples also tell us that the future tense is the easiest amongst all the grammatical lessons to be learned in the Spanish language. In the upcoming chapters, we will continue with these kind of stories which are in the part of e-text so that you can have a printout of it and have a look at how these stories are using these different tenses. And in this manner, we will keep our interest alive in the grammatical comprehension which otherwise becomes a bit boring without having some good examples which are being used in real life and living language like Spanish. We will also try to keep the modules interesting through different journeys of stories in our little collection. I would like to conclude by saying that the future tense in Spanish is very simple to use and you can learn it up by just memorizing it from the e-text and in the verb lists which are given. The simple future tense should not be used as something difficult to grasp at all because we have seen how easy it is used to use the future tense. The conjugations follow a set pattern. All you have to do is to memorize the pattern and you will learn how to use it perfectly and you would be able to communicate much more better in Spanish in the future tense. Muchas gracias.